Hello, my name is Zachary Parker and today I will be talking to you about creating a new domain user. This will be for new help desk technicians that have just joined the company and hopefully this will give you an idea of what a domain is, uh, why they're important, and how to do basic configuration on them by creating new users and creating mailboxes for new exchange accounts. So the first thing I'd like to discuss is what exactly is a domain. Now, domain is a collection of objects that are stored in a central directory. <clears throat> These kind of objects can be printers, computers, servers, users, groups. There's things called organizational units that you can use to group all these kind of things together that have similar, um, have similar needs. And in Microsoft Network, this directory structure is called Active Directory. Uh, Apple has its own um, directory structure and so does Linux, but uh, the main one we'll be going over today is the one for Microsoft and that is Active Directory. And one of the most important things that a domain and uh, the organization that this does is it allows for central management. So instead of uh, making, if you need to make a change within your network, instead of having to go to every single computer and make that change, you can just make the change on, in the central location and it'll push out those changes to the computers. And these uh, domain you might be familiar with, especially being up at UAF, how you can have your one single account being like your first and last name and you can log into any computer in any labs. <clears throat> it's because that user account is created at a central location and when those computers check that username and password it goes to that central location instead of looking on the local computer so instead of having a local account set up on every single computer there's just that account set up once and then you can use it on everything that's within that structure so going over what I just spoke about uh, what's the difference between a local and a domain user the local users Everyone's done this on a new computer that they bought. When you go through the initial setup, they'll make you create a local user account. And that is just one that is created on that computer. It can only be used to access that machine. And a domain user will be created within a central database. And once it is created on that central database, anything that is connected to that central database, you'll be able to use that user name and account for. So like I was explaining before, that's new computer that you got, that user account that you create on that you wouldn't be able to use on your friend's account so one thing that the domain does is if you have both you and your friends computers attached to that domain when you create a new user within that domain you can log on to both of those computers with that same account and password so it kind of makes it easy for you to only have one password to log on to everything and get access to everything that you need and it makes it the administration of it much easier as you don't have to manage uh, individual passwords on the computer just in that one location. And here's just a visual representation of what having local resources versus uh, domain resources will look like. And this picture, every computer has to be attached to each other. So if I, if this computer wants to have access to everything on the network, it'll have to have access to this computer, to this server, and then also this computer. And then if this computer needs access to everything, needs access to that computer, that computer, that server, it makes it very confusing to start creating all of these links between everything because it'll just, all these links will start to build up and it doesn't seem that bad when there's only four objects there, but if you get up to a hundred, the amount of links and permissions that you have to set up becomes overwhelming. But within the domain, all you have to do is have this one central location where you hold all of your information about uh, your directory and then you push that out to all the computers. So the only places you have to make changes is on that server and then it'll push it out to all your computers that are within that domain. So the good thing is that this is very scalable. So if you do have 100 computers, it's only you only have this one spot to manage it and it'll push it out to everything instead of making links to every single one of those computers to, to trust each other. So now to get at the task at hand, there's going to be three um, tools that we'll be using today. The first one is Active Directory Users and Computers. This is a Microsoft tool that is used to manage anything within the directory. This includes users, groups, and computers. Uh, within this tool, you can create, del delete, and edit those things. And it's just a, a tool to easily organize the structure of your Active Directory domain. And it, uh, it is one of the tools that allows you to centrally manage all those, uh, those objects. The next one is Exchange Management Console. And Exchange, just to give a brief idea of what it is, it's a 
mail server program that was developed by Microsoft and it is used for businesses to internally host their own emails. So instead of using something like Microsoft or Gmail or things like that, they can create their own um, domain names. So you can have, my, my name is Zachary Parker, so I can have zparker at parker.com or something like that. So you can have your own custom domain name so you're more professional for the businesses and it's just a, a great program that is easy to manage and uh, widely used throughout the uh, throughout businesses. And the last one is remote desktop connection. This allows you to connect to remote computers. It's it allows you to not phys not have to be physically at a computer. I, if I have the computer's name, I can just use this remote desktop connection and access the computer, and it'll look like I'm sitting there right at the keyboard and mouse and looking at the screen. It captures all of my actions from the keyboard and mouse and sends it uh, to the remote computer and executes those commands. So well, anything that I, that I could do uh, physically sitting there, I can also do remotely through the software. So I'm going to be talking to you about two ways to creating users. The first will be uh, creating a user account in Active Directory Users and Computer and then creating a mailbox in Exchange Management Console. And this is mostly, this is a slower way of doing it. Uh, the next one we talk about will be much quicker, but this way allows us uh, to do it separately. So if there is already a user account, we can create just the mailbox. So right now I am logged into a computer on a client site. This computer does not have Active Directory or Exchange installed on it. So I want to be using Microsoft uh, or Remote Desktop Connection to access it. And to get there, I'll go to the Start menu, and then All Programs, then Accessories, and then System Tools. Oh, not system tools up here, it just accessories and remote desktop connection. I guess it's changed recently, or not recently, in the past eight years. But uh, so the first the current server we're going to be connecting to will be the Active Directory server. And actually, on in this uh, instance, the Active Directory and the Exchange is on the same server. So I'm connecting to that server. So you can see it looks like uh, I am physically at that computer, but in all reality, this was the original computer I'm connecting to, and here's the connection to the other one, and this is a completely different computer, it just looks very similar. So to get to, the first thing we're going to be doing is creating the user, so we'll want to go to Start Menu, All Programs, Administrative Tools, and then Users and Computers. And here is our Active Directory structure. So just to keep things simple, not going too in depth, I'm just going to go and create a new user within users. So we can right click, go to new user. And this will create the user within the Active Directory structure, which I can use to log into any computer on the domain. And then once the account is created, I can push that information out to, or I can use that uh, account to uh, give permissions to other resources like files and printers and things like that. So my first name, just put your name in there, then log on, I'm just going to use test, and that's your first name, last name, log on name will be the name that you log into, and this is just for older uh, domain types from pre-2000, so it's uh, very old technology that normally isn't used today. Click next, pick a password. And you want to put a uh, user must change password on the next logon. So the first time that user logs on, instead of using the password that you created, they can create their own password and start uh, having their own information instead of you knowing uh, their password and having that information. Then next and then finish. And that's it. So now that that's created, we can come down here to create the mailbox. And we'll go to Start Menu and then All Programs. And then this might be different depending on your Exchange version, but on this computer it is Exchange Server 2010, and then Exchange Mon Management Council Console. <clears throat> so give this a little bit of time to initiate. So now we are 
inside the Exchange Console. And there's many things you can do within this, uh, lots of different settings, but we're just going to do the most basic, uh, just since this is for Help Desk, that they'll just be creating new mailboxes. So the first is want to expand the on-premise uh, container, and then Recipient Configuration, and then click on Mailbox. And then over here in the Actions pane, it'll give us the new mailbox option. So we'll want to click on that. And from here, we would, uh, want to create a new user mailbox. And then we want to use existing user. We want to add. And we'll want to find that new account that we created. So Zachary Parker. Next. This is beyond the scope, so we'll just want to click Next. And then Create New. And then we'll go ahead and create the new mailbox. And that that's it. That creates uh, our account first, and then our mailbox uh, second. So the second way I'm going to be talking about is just creating the user and the mailbox straight from Exchange Man Management Console. So from the computer, again, we go to Start Menu, All Programs, and then find your Exchange Server folder, and then Exchange Management Console. And then, again, expand the container for on-premise. And then recipient configuration, mailbox, and then new mailbox. So we'll still want to do a user mailbox, but this time, instead of using an existing user, we'll go to new user. So we'll click next on that, and it'll give us uh, about the same information we had within the Active Directory users and computers. And I'll just use mailbox test for this portion. So the first name, last name, middle initials, and needed. And this will be the user logon, and we'll just do test2. So again, that's the for the older technologies of Windows 2000. Create a password. And you want to change a user, change password, just so when the first time they log on, they can create their own password. Apparently I can't type. Again, this is beyond the scope, and that's going to be the alias for our mailbox. Next. And then new again. And that will create this completed successfully and now we can come down to after directory and see that the new account was created right here so that is uh, the two ways that you can create the user and account in mailbox and uh, if you have any questions please let me know and I'll be more than happy to answer them